Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Release Jam where we share all of the cool and exciting features we have been working on. We have a really packed show for you today. Starting with this release, you now have the ability to turn off watermarks from your applications, which I personally think is really cool. Also, the autocomplete experience on AppSmith has been supercharged, so it's been made better and I'm going to show you exactly what this means. Starting with this release, you can now abort a running query, which is a really handy feature. And lastly, the chat widget has been upgraded to support teaming. So we have lots of cool updates to share with you tonight and let's jump right in. As always, my name is Confidence and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. I'm going to be the host of tonight's stream, so let's get started. If you run a self-hosted installation of AppSmith, it's possible now, starting with this release, for you to hide the AppSmith watermark, which is just so awesome. But to enable this feature or to hide the watermark, you will need to upgrade to a business edition, which is awesome because it helps you to support the project and gives me a job. <laughs> so let's go in and let me show you how to turn on this feature after upgrading to the business edition. I'll be leaving links below and the like button so that you have all of the steps you need to upgrade to a business edition. So right here, um, as you can see on the screen, I am working on an application and something you notice is that it has the built on AppSmith watermark. But if you're running a self-hosted installation of AppSmith with the upgrade, you can turn this off. So let's head over to my self-hosted installation, which is right here, um, as you can see from the URL. And to turn off the built on AppSmith watermark, what I need to do is go to the admin settings. And here in the general page, um, you, we have this new option to turn off the watermark. So what you just need to do is make sure this check mark is turned off then you can go ahead to save and restart your installation and you'll be good to go. I already have this done, so I don't need to do all of that. Let's head back to my dashboard and I'm going to go ahead to launch my application. All right, and as you can see, we don't have the built on AppSmith watermark anymore. This is such a clean looking application with little branding whatsoever, or actually no branding at all. So this is something that you'd find useful. Um, now this feature is available, so go check it out. Next up, we have a better autocomplete experience when writing JavaScript in AppSmith. By the way, have you guys seen our new release notes? They are just so amazing. You should go check it out. Shout out to Viha and Pat from our release team who are working so hard to make sure our release notes are just better. All right, going back to autocomplete, we have supercharged the autocomplete experience on AppSmith to make it provide more useful suggestions while writing JavaScript on AppSmith. And it's at the same level as native ideas. The autocomplete is just so much better and it's going to make it easier for you to write complex apps on AppSmith. So let me show you how this works. Let's hop over to the app I have opened right here so that I can show you exactly how it works. Previously, the autocomplete experience on AppSmith only really supported widgets on AppSmith, but going forward, it has been expanded to support suggestions from queries and APIs, and I'm just going to show you a quick demo. So right here, I'm working on the get users query, and it's a simple get request that returns a bunch of users using the mock API available for testing. So I can go run this, for example, and now we have some data coming back. If you take a look at this data we have coming back, this is an object, as you can see, with a bunch of users in the users array. And each user is an object having an ID that is a number. So to show you how powerful this new autocomplete experience is, let's go create a new JavaScript file and let's try to build something using this API. So I'm just going to go create a new JavaScript file. And here, I'm going to use the get users query. So we can do a return, get users.data. And notice that right here, we have autocomplete suggestions for the properties of the response from that query, which is just awesome. We have next, we have previous, and we have users, which is an array. So we can go take a look at what we have in users index zero. And over here, we also have autocomplete suggestions for the properties of a user. You can see we have all of the other properties and we have ID, which is a number. So I can click on this and uh, this looks good to go. So I can go ahead to return this and this returns a number as you would expect. Now, the autocomplete experience on AppSmith has also been expanded to blocks of code, which would be very handy while building on AppSmith. So for example, if you need an if statement or an if block, you can just use the autocomplete for that. 
and that's going to save you some keystrokes while typing. Same also works for the try catch block. So we can do a try, for example. So this is the try catch block. And here we have the block auto completed for us, which is just awesome. So now that you've seen it, this makes it so much easier to build complex apps on AppSmith. I wish I had auto complete for videos. Now, this next feature is God sent. You may not run into this issue depending on the application you're working on, but in certain situations, especially during development and working with long running APIs or database queries, uh, you may run into this issue where you forget to add something into the body of the request and then you're stuck waiting for the request to fill before you can go in to make changes to that request. And that sucks. So the lovely engineers at AppSmith thought of a way to make the experience better and they invented the ability for you to abort or cancel a running query. I know it's such a novel idea. So let's take a look at it right here. So I have this um, page open, this application open. It's a web scraper application, which is gathering data from CoinMarketCap. And if we go take a look at the API, which is actually doing all of the work, it's a long running API. Um, so I can go run this, for example. So let's go ahead to run this. And this is going to take um, a couple of um, seconds for it to complete. But if I need to make changes to the body with this feature, I can easily go cancel the request, as you can see right here. So I can go ahead to cancel the request, um, head back to the body tab, make changes, and then go to rerun the request. So this just makes it so much easier to work with APIs and database queries on AppSmith because now you have the ability to counter requests, go in to make changes, and then rerun the request. This is just awesome. The last feature we're going to be taking a look at in today's episode of Release Jam is updates we've made to the chat widget. Right now, the chat widget has been upgraded and it supports theming just like the other widgets on AppSmith. Now, all of your apps will be consistent to the selected theme, regardless of whatever widget you have selected. Oh, <laughs> list widget. <laughs> so now let me go back and show you how it works. So right here, um, we have a blank application. But one thing you notice is that we have the blue theme selected. So if I go to bring in a chat widget, for example, so let's go bring in a chat widget. As you notice, the chat widget respects the selected theme and we have a blue themed chat widget. And of course, this also works for other chat types. So for example, I can go select a line chat and that's also blue, but let's head back to select um, a column chat, which is blue. Now I'm going to go ahead to change the theme. So let's go change the theme to Pampas, which is green. And you notice that the entire chat has been updated. So this is a really handy feature and it makes it such that whenever you use the chat widget, it's just going to be consistent with the theming properties of your application. Awesome. And that's our show for tonight, guys. But before we go, don't forget to go check out our, our release notes for more information on the features and fixes that have been shipped. I'm going to have it linked below the like button, so go check it out. Also, don't forget to get subscribed. And remember, real-time commenting has been deprecated. So all of your comments are going to be done async now. All right, take care, guys. See you next time.